Hey, Dave here, DMAT Customs on YouTube in the garage. Area 51. Um, okay, if you're new here, you'll notice there's no front sheet metal on there, but that's sitting over there, and that's gonna start on that, this project. I don't know this this video, I don't know how far we'll get on it because I don't know what, what I'm gonna find under those front fenders, especially the bonnet I think is pretty good. I don't think there's a heap of filler in that. There is a little bit in the front where the old badge used to sit, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, but yeah, so basically I'm just gonna start sanding and kind of prep it up. I'll dig into where I know there's potential issues first up, see if there's anything that needs welding up. There's some of the gravel guard holes I'll have to weld up, I think, but yeah, we'll just hook into it. Surprisingly, the um, factory like bitumen stuff is coming off really easy. Uh, so I'm just going to launch ahead and scrape off as much of that as I can with this method. And uh, yeah, I thought that was going to be much more problematic than that, but not going to be. But I've got to take these headlight buckets and stuff out too. Actually, I might do that before I go too much further, and then. Uh, yeah, carry on scraping. Okay, so got the worst of it off on that first guard. Just noticed some up inside the lip there that I didn't get. Um, but this second guard is kind of proving to be a little bit more stubborn. Um, it was kind of only a thin splattering on that guard, whereas this side here was a little bit heavier, but not heavy enough to come off in sheets, just heavy enough to actually still be sticking quite good after 70 some years. Um, but yeah, now I've got some in my eye. I should have eye protection on. I'll go and sort this out. <laughs> got some eye protection on. I don't know how long these will last. I think they're going to fog up in about... They're already starting to. Three, two, one. Fogging. Now. Um, <laughs> yeah, see? Foggy. Uh, yeah, got that bit of stuff out of my eye, I think, so it wasn't too bad, it was kind of just right there and I was able to just jam my grubby finger in there and kind of give it a wee flick it out. But yeah, so I'll just carry on, I'll get these up to the same level, basically, and then, I, but also, I was going to take the headlight buckets out, but I can't get the bloody things out because I've got clutch head screws, and I can't, they're a bit rusty on the back, that's what I was going to do, was, Give this one a bit of a squirt on the back. I'm just spraying some CRC on the back of them, see if I can kind of loosen them up. That just kind of get the worst of this rusty business softened up or something um, to hopefully get them out because I'd rather get them out, paint them separately, and all that kind of stuff, you know, being all you know, professional and stuff. Um, not that I'm professional. But you know, give the appearances of it anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'll just carry on and I'll meet you back here when I've got these somewhat better. Ah, uh, thought I'd point out though, inside of these guards are pretty, pretty clean. That one's a little bit more pitted down here, um, but on the whole, like there's doesn't appear to be any rust that I can see from the inside. So. That's a plus. Um, that one, the other guard, I did notice there's a bit of a crease in it, which I'll be able to sort of hammer up. Actually, if you can see, about halfway, there's a crease about eight inches long. 
that's the one I was just talking about. So I'll just carry on and uh, keep scraping and stuff. It's not taking that long, but well, that one didn't take me long. This one's already taken me about as long as it took to do the whole guard. So we'll carry on, carry on and see how far we get. Okay, so got obviously got that headlight one headlight bucket out. Now some of the screws kind of wanted to come out relatively easy, some of them uh, they just didn't. So not having the, the proper um, what do you call it clutch head screwdrivers and tools and stuff to do that. I just kind of had to. Um, improvise and I've got a couple of like square head screwdrivers that sometimes if I can get it to break that kind of rusty crusty seal I can then kind of you know get the old clutch heads undone which is what I just did and uh, yeah so she was a bit it's not rusty but just crunchy you know like all the old tar and dirt dobbers and crap like that built up inside there Kind of locking those screws in and you know rust on the screws on these little clutch heads so i'll probably do away with those and just put something else in when i put it all back together yeah all right i'll just finish cleaning that but the area up and then i'll try and get that bucket out of the other side but yeah on the whole it's not too bad just needs a good scrape and a bit of a wire brush and stuff like that Been doing some DAing on the inside of this particular fender just to kind of like kind of take the worst of it off. I'm not going stripping it right back to shiny metal, that's just a bridge too far, you know what I'm saying? So been working my way along this edge, pretty hard to get in here with the with the old DA, but I'll um come back through and get in all the hard to get bits by hand in that anyway, and then probably square a bit of that rust convertery shit around. On the inside of the guards and uh yeah but right now i'm going to flip it over and start on the outside of this one Man, oh man, got tingly fingers from running the DA. I've been running that other sander as well with some 40 grit on it because I haven't got any 40 for, for that just to try and cut through some of this stuff. It was kind of taking the edge off my DA um, paper, my 80 grit, pretty quick. So, you know, like switch to that stuff. And paper's lasting well, but it's losing its, you know, loses its head around that outer edge because I'm running kind of on the edge of it sort of thing. She's coming up. 
I'm trying to decide now whether to there's a few little dents like I found a whole bunch of bog across the top of the guard here there's a few little bits in here where there's just like little shopping trolley dents and stuff like that there's a wee dent here a little crease there and a crease through there so I'm thinking I might sort of hammer some of this stuff up there's a, there's a wee ding in there I don't know whether I'll be able to get that I'll try then epoxy this or epoxy it first and then you know do the dentage and that like there's a high there was some bog on the top of this but that's actually a high spot right there so you could actually see it on there so i might be able to sort of flush that out a wee bit at least knock it down so i can fill it properly if you know what i mean so because i mean that was that bog was actually sitting proud sitting high and it was always like that so whoever did that did it weirdly you know what i mean but <laughs> it is what it is. History lesson though, you know. And we've got this where the old gravel guard sat. This is like kind of marks and that in here. I'm probably gonna weld these these holes up because I don't have the trim or the gravel guards. Tucks down here. I don't have the gravel guards anyway and I'm not gonna get them for two reasons. One is like I'm in New Zealand and Finding gravel guards for a 51 Chev that are in good condition is next to impossible. Um, importing repop stuff, I just can't see the value in it to be honest. I'm not that excited about that piece of trim. If I had it, I'd probably use it, but I don't have it, so I'd probably just I'm gonna do something else. I don't know what yet, but we'll figure that out when we get there. Maybe nothing, maybe not have any trim down the bottom there, I don't know yet. Doesn't really bother me that much, but but yeah, my ears are ringing a bit. So, decisions, decisions. Do I start hammering this up now, or do I hook into the other guard and try and get them both in epoxy today? Nah, I'll probably aim for epoxy tomorrow, actually. Like, hammer this up as much as I can. And then give it another once over tomorrow. Go around and do all the hand sandy bits and dip it a once over tomorrow to take off any flash that's occurring overnight because it is pretty humid at the moment. And uh, yeah, maybe then hook into the other one. Just get it done while I'm into it, you know. <laughs> Don't seem really that really into it, but yeah, it's got to be done.
Okay, so that's all the dents that I'm knocked out of there that I've kind of found for now. Probably be more in there, but worry about that later. Um, thought I'll get on to starting to sand up this piece before we weld up those holes. Probably be tomorrow before we weld up those holes now and uh, and go give all that a final once over before I chuck some epoxy on that and hopefully get them both ready to go tomorrow. So more DAing, yeah, daing, yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so halfway through this guard on the first pass with the old 40 grip, um, thought I'd stop and show you this. Like this is some some fine Bondo work, probably from the early Michael Jackson period. You know when he was with the brothers before he went out on his own. Possibly a little later, but like yeah, I'm just looking at this. This is this ridge here is steel. And then there's a dip, and then there's a dip on either side. So where you could easily kind of get up behind there and hammer it back out, it was just filled. I'm not quite sure what's going on under these ones yet. I suspect they're probably just dents, um, but kind of easy access to kind of hammer them up, and they've just you know bolt them. Now I'm not condemning that kind of behaviour. Well, I kind of am by. 20, 23, 24 standards. I've done way worse with bog and shit like that on some of my cars in the past just through sheer ignorance of what the product was actually for. Um, whereas now I know better, you know? But I mean, essentially that's what it's for, filling minor dents, but I don't know, I just kind of think maybe a little bit of hammer time, on, hammer time on that. And the old, you know? been a little bit less rather than building it up it's filling it in sort of thing you know anyway i just thought i'd show you a bit of area 51 archaeology just for you know because it's there i find it interesting anyway carry on okay it's not all glamour you know hot riding and stuff <laughs> um and it's hot and dusty and stuff, but anywho, got this to this, um, this little thing here, this little high spot, managed to knock that up a little, these bits here up, took the bog out obviously, and you can see where someone just kind of bashed it back and, you know, bogged over it. It's been there, done that. Um, down over here, there was a quite a bit deep, oh, it was there, I think it was quite a deep, dent like it's been hit with a bullpen hammer and then a couple of other ripples and a bit of a fold there knock them up across the top here was in the bog that was oh, i don't know if i showed you but there was a skim of bog about that big where all these little dents are kind of and all these file marks as well all over there oh geez that fell over um so yeah took that out managed to knock those little dents up but they're not super flush but um, close enough that my my system will smooth them out the rest of the way. I just wanted to take, oh, that's right, there was another one here, which was a funny little ripply, creasy dent thing, which managed to bring that up pretty good, actually. I was kind of roughing it in, and then it kind of looked like it was home, you know, so I just left it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, just, anyway, that's enough for today. Got a bit of a quick clean up. Okay, battery died. Um, got to have a quick clean up, throw away all these pads, you know, got to make a mess just stripping two guards. Crikey, that's when it's inside and out, and out, and it's like 70 some years of stuff that I'm now wearing. <laughs> Check it out. I oh, know, that's all on my forehead now, that stuff that was on my knuckles. Anyway, till tomorrow. Hey guys, so next day I'm um, going to start with welding up these three trim gravel guard holes that I'm not going to be using. Um, so I'm just going to cut me some little bits of filler to put into those. I could just mig them up and I'll probably end up puckering the holes and stuff and it's pretty thin so there's not much like 
steel for grinding like there's a bit of pitting and that going on down here but so uh, it's kind of got to be kind of fairly careful kind of shoulda woulda coulda and all that kind of stuff cutting me some little bits to go in there just gotta flatten that one down i just gotta get it to the right length and cut some radiuses on the ends and try to make it a real accurate fit and i'll have a crack at, crack at tig welding it yeah okay cool let's do it So check that out, like with my TIG welder, I haven't done it for a while, but sometimes if I accidentally hit the trigger while I'm too far away from my, my job, it must be a frequency thing and it activates my garage doors. Go figure, I don't know if anyone knows the science behind that. Let us know, because it's kind of weird. Especially if I've got it on that little pulse mode type thing that kind of pulses. I don't know quite what that does, but it uh, definitely triggers my garage doors <laughs> in that situation so yeah strange but anyway got two out of three of these holes welded up on this particular guard um, taking a real cautious approach trying not to overheat it although there is going to be filler and stuff down here i don't know then gopros just decide they don't want to play anymore and turn themselves off electronic stuff hey, it's great but it's a Pain in the ass at the same time. Okay, carry on. Looking good. GoPro issues, man. It go. always happens when I've got big Mickey Mouse gloves on. I try to turn the GoPro on, it won't turn on. It's one of my batteries, it just does it. If you pull the battery, put it back in, it's all good. But that's something you can't do when you've got your Mickey Mouse gloves on. Anyway, first world problems. <laughs> um, from back here, those holes are welded up, up close. There's no pinholes, but it's not, not the prettiest sort of thing. It's, it's a bit thin down here, you ended up blowing out down here and chasing it around and just, you know, if you've done that before you know you're kind of like pushing shit uphill basically but i've got the shit to the top of the hill and the holes are filled up so what i'll do once this is epoxied is i'll skim some um, new tech or fiberglass in that area i've already sprayed last night the old um rust fix on there to kind of convert that that rust after wire wheeling it it's a couple of pits that are a bit thin up there you know if time and money were no option, I would whoosh, cut the bottom of that off and make a new one, but I can't be bothered, man. I'm just, you just, you know, go around and around in circles. If it blows out in two years, I'll take the guard off and I'll cut the bottom off it and I'll do it again. But for now, um, that's where we're gonna leave that as far as the welding goes. So we've got to just now do that again on the other side. So I'll touch base when I've done that. But I've got to go out and get some more rust fix stuff so I can do the inside of the guards. Hopefully they've got some. So, back. Alrighty, so that's guard number two's holes welded up down the bottom there. That side actually went a little bit better. Um, I haven't gone nuts trying to like flush it out completely because again, got a little bit of thin steel there and I don't really want to kind of, you know, go for that file finish and then have it be like tinfoil thin at the end of it if you know what I mean so leaving a little bit of stuff on there it's not proud like it's not standing up so but you can still see it if you know what I mean what are you looking at my um <laughs> looking at my boobies so I'm gonna shoot down to the local uh, Ripco Rip, Ripco sorry a little Freudian slip there and see, pick up some more rust fix hopefully they've got some actually some of 
that stuff. I'll just double check that I haven't got another can of it. I did have two, but I might have used the second one. Yeah. Uh. Oh, oh. Uh oh. Fortunately, that didn't go everywhere. No. Don't think I have. So, go and grab me another can of this stuff because this one's nearly empty. Pick up that. And hopefully they've got it. They are carrying a different brand, that Amiga stuff now. So whether that's all they carry, whether they've still got the Duke color, I don't know. So I'm back with a couple of cans of Duke color Rust Fix, and uh, just gonna give all the insides of these guards a, a bit of a whiz around with that, and sort of kind of lock it in. Hopefully keep it at bay, won't cure it completely, I know that, but you know, just give it a, a taste of that. So let's do that. Use up the old can first. Still not sponsored in any way. Um, gave both of them a good kind of soaking with that stuff, especially in the heavier kind of surface rusty areas, which was more in the back part of those guards and what certain bits, the lower parts, you know, down here and stuff. Um, I'm going to move these out into the bake oven while I can. It's supposed to turn to shite later on today. It is actually New Year's Eve today. Um, so I'm going to make the most of being able to get stuff to dry quicker so I can um, chuck some of my wattle etch on the inside of these um, and yeah wouldn't mind it spraying my stone guard stuff around on them too before I do the epoxy that would be that would be good fun but yeah I don't know whether I'll get all of that dry because I want to get that epoxy on today so I've got to re, re sand everything as well give it one more going over before I do the final kind of shoot, get my sort of sweaty handprints that probably made things flash off and that. And uh, yeah, anyway, enough jibber jabber, I've got to get these out in the sun. Okay, so suitably baked the recommended 24 hours for that duplicolor and um, masked off. So I'm just going to shoot some of my wattle rust kill um, epoxy etch on the inside, which I don't want to get on this stuff here because I'll be putting the 2K epoxy on there um, and same on the edge of the guard. And I figured since I've kind of got it all masked up, I'll probably bake oven those as well and then do my stone guard stuff on there while we're here and try not to spray it all around the whole garage <laughs> okay so let's do it
Okay, so two coats. I put two coats on. I only showed one in the videoing because um, I was running out of paint in my spray gun at the very end of that last coat. So I topped it off and then gave it another coat. I just went in also and seam sealed the back of those little holes that we welded up this morning. And there was another repair in the front that the previous owner did um, that just needed seam sealing as well. It was all finished up on the front already, but on the inside it still had the kind of exposed welds and stuff. So I just yeah, kind of gave those a bit of a seam seal. Um, so just got to let that bake and then I'll do my stone guard I think while, it, while it's hot. Um, I'll be able to get that dried off pretty quick that I can then flip them over and, and spray the uh, epoxy, this stuff, on. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so just go and watch some paint dry for a bit and then uh, do some splatter stone guarding. I don't know how I'm going to do it without getting it all over the place. It's the only problem. Back in from the bake oven, well and truly cooked. I think this, this steel is just actually probably too hot to spray that um, stone guard stuff on at the moment. So I have to let this, let it cool down a little bit. And uh, missed a few bits, but that's all right. <laughs> Give us a few minutes, let this stuff cool off, and then we'll um, hit it. Okay, bladder guard, stone guard stuff done on the inner inner guards. I probably should have masked off this top edge. I managed to get some little bits splattered on there and on the bottom edge, but still got to go around and sand all this exterior stuff all proper like in that anyway. But for now, I might chuck this out in the bake oven, get them cooking before the weather turns. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some epoxy on these guards in a while. Yeah? Crocodile. I wonder if I should unmask them first. I will. I'll unmask them while they're wet because that's more risky. Starting to go off as in dry bake up sort of thing. Probably another, they've only been out there a couple minutes, but probably give them another sort of 20 minutes, half an hour out there, bring them back in, let them cool off a bit, and then I can start getting the outer sheet metal ready to squirt some epoxy. I've got to kind of go around them again on the DA with some uh, or 80 grit again, and then do a little bit of hand sanding in around those headlight return bezel areas and yeah, we should be pretty good to go but I'll probably need to it's pretty pretty humid today so you know sweaty hands so I'll probably have to be wearing gloves and, and and stuff try and stop that kind of the salt and stuff from the sweat getting in there and trying to look, drip on them and stuff like that yeah yeah okay but I'll give them all a, a wipe down before they get their final, you know, kind of painting in that anyway. So that'll be cool. Let's do this. Hmm. Now, why we all don't like the uh, foam pads that much on the 
thing or it likes them too much, one of the two, um, on the panel stands. But yeah, I have to go and buy some pool noodles or something like that from the old warehouse or the hardware store or something like that. Should be plenty around this time of year, but I won't do it just yet. I'll get them get a bit more scody before I do that. Still drying up, nearly there. Alrighty, so that's the final sand done on there. Just got to mix up some epoxy, dust off, wipe down, give it a real good kind of wipe down, get all my greasy handprints and stuff off, and um, shoot these guards with some epoxy. This stuff. Yeah, exciting. And then, oh, it's really just the bonnet inside and out. Or I say really just, it's like a big hunk of sanding and that on there. But, yeah, we're getting there. Man, it's hot. It's like not crazy hot temperature, but humidity is up. And uh, it's supposed to, I don't know whether it's going to do it though. Eh? They reckon it's going to get, we're going to get thunder and rain and heavy rain and all that sort of shit later on. Might be later tonight, but that's why I'm kind of like trying to get this stuff done. <laughs> so it can... Uh, not be in raw steel anymore like that but um, yeah wrapped with how we're going so far the old getting all that stuff done on the inside the rust fix and the primer and then the stone guard and that we've had a pretty productive day so far today well a couple of days actually kind of getting these guards into where we're at at the moment um yeah so let's get some paint mixed up dust off all this crap and then I'll pull the door down a bit and so we don't kind of shadow coat the old bomb truck out there and uh, squirt some of this stuff around. Hey guys, well that's one coat down. Um, I really like this stage, eh? Because you kind of see something, feels like a major thing's happened after all of this sanding and prepping and hammering and welding and shit, even though that's like pretty huckery looking down there. Um, it gets a big change happening, if you know what I'm saying, and it like you just kind of go, yeah, we've done something today. And, uh, but yeah, although it does, highlight a lot of the blemishes and the dents and dings and that that I've missed but it's kind of the point 
kind of, I guess. But yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm gonna, I've gotta get a second coat on this now because it's, it's already tacking off. It's so warm today. It's well and truly tacking off. So I would get a second coat on this and then see you on the other side of that. I won't bother filming that, I'll just get it done. Two coats of epoxy, well kind of two and a bit, I actually laid it up a bit more on some of the bits where I know I'm going to be sort of sanding quite a lot. Um, had a bit of trouble with the old spray gun again, I have to admit, on this particular priming episode. Um, and discovered what it was upon cleaning out the spray gun, I discovered that the little ear cap on the top of the cup was plugged up with high build primer from when I was what was I painting? Oh the inner fenders there, yeah. The rest of the gun I actually remember being quite meticulous about how well I cleaned it out and I was quite proud of myself until this moment where I discovered that there was a little dried plug of paint <laughs> starving my spray gun from air. So the only air it was getting was what it could suck in from around the cap, you know? So um, to replace the paint that was coming out, so it felt like it was starving a bit. I opened up the, the fluid feed a bit and it can't help minimally. Um, so I couldn't really kind of see what I was doing, especially on the second coat. So I ended up getting it a little bit dry in a few places, but that's once, yeah, that's why I kind of went in and laid a bit more in. Um, but on the whole, yeah, you can see like little bits of damage here and there, little dings here and there here and there, little bits of pitting from under the trim, all this kind of pinhole mess which will, that'll get all smoothed out, don't worry about that. These were dents that I sort of were able to knock out yesterday, that actually, that bit there came out better than I thought it would. Um, this one here, a little bit of pitting down, down low, a um, little bit again under the trim, little, couple of little little you know shopping trolley dings up there and I think this one was the it's got like a bit of elbow damage I don't know if you can see it in this light but across the top here there's like three good elbow dents which I managed to knock most of them out yesterday which they're right the on top of the other guard there's a whole bunch of uh like little duck, 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 like someone's hit it with a, a pick half a dozen times you know um, but yeah so that's them kind of done kind of itching to bolt them up on the car and see what it looks like but they're still a little soft at the moment so I've just got to be patient man waiting for paint to dry enough that I can put handprints in it and things like that <laughs> okay so couldn't help myself and I've kind of got the guards sitting up here, managed to scratch my new black paint already, but you know, a couple of places. Um, but yeah, got both of them kind of loosely sitting up there, the gaps are terrible at the moment. Um, but they're on there. That one there is not bolted in down the bottom, while it is in the front part of the bottom, not the bottom part of the bottom, you know what I'm saying? Um, this one here, I managed to get a bolt in at the bottom, front and back, but can't get it to move forward that way at the moment, but it's too soft to go pushing on it. I'm, I'm feeling a, my imprints of my hands kind of hitting it as, we, as, as I try it. So I'll leave it, let it cure up properly, stop messing with it, stop being impatient, and I'll go and have a beer because it is New Year's Eve. And it's raining, middle of summer told you the rain was coming and here it is and I timed that kind of perfectly I think it's got the bomb truck in just as I heard it starting to kind of pitter patter on the old roof you know the old oil can door stop there's the old murder Murray should be getting some attention soon don't you worry about that I want to get this motor out of my way so <laughs> need to give it some attention um, yeah, look at that, it's starting to come in sideways. Here it comes. But anywho, right, so, um, I was going to say, 
that's where I'm going to leave this video. <laughs> Closing off the doors. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave this video on the old Area 51 project. Another, another good kind of jump ahead, getting something in primer. Um, which is always a good thing, get it sealed up and sealed away sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so next time around, might muck around with trying to fit those up a little bit better. Um, also got to make a number plate bracket, also got to do the bonnet, a hood, whatever. I don't know, I'll figure it out, we'll, we've got to do it all at some point, so I'll, I'll have a play with something, depends on how hard I want to work on that given day. Um, <laughs> But yeah, if you haven't subscribed, get over there, hit the button, notifications bell, subscribe, like, comment, share, all that kind of crap. Um, be much appreciated, appreciate any new subscribers and original subscribers that have come on board and are watching the progress on, on this and the mucking around on your bomb truck and whatever. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. But as always, thanks for watching. Till next time, take it easy. Peace. And yeah, officially it's New Year's Eve here, so I'm gonna go and have a beer and maybe have a shower and then have a beer. Maybe have a beer, then have a shower, and then we'll have a beer in the shower. And just joking. Um but yeah, till next time. Peace.